Hey guys, and welcome back to another Technology Guru video. So in today's video, I'm going to do an overview video of Adobe Audition CC. So basically this is going to be a getting started video showing you all of the basic features to get you up and running when it comes to recording audio with Adobe Audition, as well as editing audio in both the single track and the multi-track editor. So as you see here, we are in the, um, you know, basically the main window here within Adobe Audition, and I'm going to show you the different different sections of the interface and tell you about kind of what they are and how to use them. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So what you see here is the waveform editor. This is the individual track editor. And then if you look here, I have a session open. This is the multi-track editor where you have multiple tracks or channels, whatever you want to call them. And you can move individual tracks of audio around and edit them together. You would see this primarily for things such as podcasting, um, so, you know, doing music recordings, things like that where you're working with multiple tracks within Adobe Audition. So let's go ahead and not get too far ahead of ourselves. In order to start a new project, it's as easy as going to File, New, and then if you want to do a multi-track session, click this one. If you want to do an individual audio file, you would click this guy here. So we're going to go ahead and start a an, just an individual audio file, and then it's going to ask you to give the audio file a name. So we'll go ahead and name this one Tutorial, just for the purposes of this video. Down below, you're going to have a few different options. Now, you need to understand a few different things about the sample rate channels uh, and not, not so much as far as the bit depth. Under sample rate, normally when you record something, you want it to be around 44, 100, uh, maybe even 48,000, uh, but I normally keep mine right at 44, 100. So unless, unless you have a client specify that you need something different than that, kind of leave it there. Under channels, you normally want to record in stereo, especially I record in mono and then whenever I save the file, I save it in stereo because what happens is you don't want to release a piece of content that the audio is only able to be heard out of one uh, you know, side of the headphones. And that's what mono would be. It would come out of one channel as opposed to two. So you definitely want to export into stereo and then leave the bit at 16 there. You can go lower if you want to, to minimize the, the file size, but this is about what you normally want to do and then click OK. Once you've clicked OK, you can hit the record button down here. So all of this down here at the bottom of your screen, this is going to be all of the interface to where you can fast forward, you can skip ahead, you can play. This button here is going to be the loop playback button. So once you record something, you can loop it back this way here. But basically the one thing you need to understand is hit that big red button just like you see here. And now as you can see, as I'm recording, you see the waveform being created here in this file. You have the timestamp at the very um, top half of of your I guess you would say interface here to let you know how long you've been recording. And then you're going to see the two different channels, one up top, one at the bottom. So when I save this file, I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording by pressing the record button once more. You can also hit shift plus the space bar and that will also begin a recording in Adobe Audition. So as you see here, uh, I have a mono track just like this here. If I wanted to edit the track, I can use my mouse scroll wheel to actually zoom in or zoom out to specific parts of the track, but if I want to edit out a specific part of the track, what I would need to do is find the part that I want to edit out and then click and hold and drag my cursor over the part of the audio that I'm wanting to edit. Now, again, in order to get access to this tool, which is, it looks like a cursor that you would see in a word processing, I guess you would say application. So it's called uh, right up here, the time selection tool. Uh, you have a, diff a few different tools. You have the marquee selection tool. You have the uh, right here, the lasso tool, as well as the paintbrush and the spot healing tool. Uh, and you can utilize those if you want to, but the one we're going to focus on today is going to be this one here, uh, which is the time selection tool, which allows you to select portions of the audio and edit those. So if I want to remove that portion of the audio, I just select it with the time selection tool and then hit delete or backspace on my keyboard. Just like any other piece of software, if you hit command or control, Z that will undo what you've just done, or you can go up to edit, undo record, or undo your last step and redo if you want to step forward as well. So that's kind of how you navigate around the audio. Again, up top up here, you're going to see the navigation bar above your timeline. If you click and hold the gray area, that's going to put the audio within this area into become visible, like what you see here. If I want to increase or zoom out, I can click and hold this guy here and drag it out to make it bigger or I can make it smaller. So if you want to zoom in, you can use the mouse scroll wheel or you can adjust this guy up here. 
As far as volume, when we go back and play this audio back, so if I go here and press the space bar or the play button down here to play the audio back like so, you have the timestamp at the very um, top half of your so as you see, as that video, or no, I'm sorry, as that audio is playing, down here you're going to see something under levels that tells you how loud or how quiet your audio is. Uh, normally you want your audio to be anywhere between the negative 12 to negative, I would say, 5 or 4 dBs, depending on the type of project that you are working on. So if you're wanting to increase the overall audio of this individual track, this guy here that I can drag around, if you click the little circle here, it's going to allow allow you to adjust or amplify the volume. So if I drag it to the right, that's going to increase the dBs. If I drag it to the left, it's going to decrease the dBs. Uh, again, increasing will make it louder, decreasing will make it quieter, obviously. And as you can see, the wave format here visually gets larger as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase it by about 2.1. And now when I go back and play it, this file, you have the time, you can see it's peaking a little bit. And what I mean by peaking is that it's hitting the red. You only want it to hit the yellow, right around this area here. So if I play it back again, I'll decrease that audio just slightly and, and then press play. just like you see here. And and as you can see, it's now going right at the yellow as opposed to peaking in the red there. You don't want it to get anywhere close to the negative three, two, or one mark. That means you're going to be peaking and your audio will sound really, really bad. So that's how you create a new file and edit that file individually. If we want to add an effect to this specific piece of audio here, we will make sure we have that file selected and then go up to effects. Under effects, you're going to have a bunch of different things here. I'm not going to cover them all in this getting started video, but you can play around with them. If you want to add an echo, you can do that here. If you want to add some compression, make it sound like you're on a radio uh, or you're doing a podcast intro, you can do that here by going to the amplitude and compression and then go to something like the multi-band compressor uh, and play around with some of the settings here on the compressor to make your voice sound a little better. Uh, and you can always turn this on or off by clicking the power button uh, on or off within that specific setting there. When you're ready and you've adjusted things the way you want it, click apply and that's going to apply to your audio. Uh, I've recorded a, a favorite that I like to use under favorites here. It's called in gate, which is my way of saying noise gate. Uh, basically, the noise gate allows you to cut off all audio below or above a certain level. That way, if you have like a fan in the background or something like that, it may cut that out for you. Uh, and the, the last thing I want to show you within an individual audio track is the ability to capture a noise print and reduce background noise. So if you go here, if you zoom really tight into this audio, you can see here my audio floor in my studio is pretty low. I mean, there's not much background noise going on behind me right now, but if I select this piece of audio here where I'm not speaking and then go to effects and then go down to where you see noise reduction and restoration, go to capture noise print. It's going to capture that little area there and then go back to it there and then go to noise reduction process. So under the noise reduction process, you will be able to capture the noise print like we just did. And then what you can do is you can select the uh, entire piece of audio. And basically what that will do is will reduce the, I will apply that now to my audio that will take that you know, background noise that you hear here, and it will remove it from the whole piece of audio, and it will make it sound really, really crisp. So Adobe Audition does a really great job uh, of using that, you know, utilizing that noise reduction tool to help your audio sound better, crisper, and, and more I guess you would say professional if that's what you want to call it. So that's how you apply effects to individual tracks. Now, we're going to dive into the multi-track editor. As you see here, I'm in a podcast that I just recently edited. Uh, here is the intro. And? And then this here is going to be the podcast content. And as you can see, I have track two here and I have track one above that. Now, the basics of the multi-track editor is this. You can basically click and hold a piece of audio and drag this to any track you want. Um, when you drag it to a new track, it's going to change colors, obviously, because it helps you differentiate between multiple channels. Um, above here, you can see this is the green one. This is the orange one. If you want to change colors, you can click the color on the left-hand side of the track, and you can make that to be any color you want it to be. Uh, and then what I want to show you from that point is that underneath the track settings here, you can actually apply effects under the effects rack here. So underneath tab one, you can click the arrow and then go to and add an effect like you would on an individual track. You can also decrease and increase the volume 
just like you would on an individual track by clicking and going to the left or right of the circle here. Uh, and you can go ahead and use this circle to make it a one-sided or if you want it to be even or whatever you want it to be, stereo or mono, you can make it and adjust the track to come on a specific portion of you know the audio, whether it be left or right headphone. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Now, uh, the last thing that I want to show you is if you want to trim audio within the multi-track editor, it's very simple. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see this. If you click and hold like this and drag to the right or to the left, that's going to allow you to edit the audio or basically cut pieces of the audio out. If you're in the middle of an audio piece and you want to cut something out, I have that hotkey set to T, which will cut there. In order to set your keyboard shortcuts or hotkeys, you can go to edit and then go down to keyboard shortcuts. And then you can see here, I have mine set at uh, right here for the T key, it will split all clips. So uh, basically that will allow me to, you know, click or tap the T key on my keyboard and that will spit, split the clips just like you see there and allows me to move the clips individually. Uh, also, I, I have another hotkey uh, that if you noticed underneath the keyboard shortcuts, if I click Q, it will actually uh, silence all audio. So if we go back to the individual audio track like what you see here, and then we get into a quiet space like here, I may be taking a breath. If I highlight that um, area there, I can tap the Q key there and that will actually reduce all of the volume in that specific area there. And when you're ready and you're done with your audio and you're wanting to save it, go to file, then go to save as. And then once you do that, you'll see the save as box come available to you here. Again, you want to go to right here where you see sample type, click change there, change the channels to stereo, uh, unless you have a purpose of doing it only uh, in one channel and then click OK. And then when you're ready, give your file a name decide where you want to save it by clicking the browse button there and then click OK and that will save that piece of audio to your computer. Hopefully this helped you out getting started with Adobe Audition. If you have any further questions about this piece of software, please put those in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and until next time, talk to you later.